Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Adult Education Ingredient. My name is Rosalia Wong. Guess what I'm going to bring you today? Today, the topic is called Counseling Adult Learners Part 2. Okay, let's get started. So for awesome suggestions and advices, you can put me through the links in the description section below and I will give you awesome insights into what you need to know for your profession and your organization. So let's go into the topic. Today, five areas. The first areas will be about the career counseling in the large hospital. And the second is up, will be about the diversity counseling. And third one will be about the career counseling in the public school. And the fourth one will be about the computer assisted career guidance. And final one, I'm going to talk about using non-traditional approach to counseling. So for part one, counseling adult learners part one, please watch the video from the links above. Let's go into and focus on the first part, first one, which is the career counselling in the large hospital setting. So what do you mean by uh, career counselling in the large hospital setting? And the study and research was done by Coxin and Redcliffe yeah, in 1981. They researched and talked about the, uh, the uh, human resource uh, department in the large hospital, which is um, especially in charge of the career of the employees in the hospital. So the large hospital, counseling in the large hospital especially, they are focused on directly of course to the staff and they focus on some uh, services provided through the offices of a human resource uh, department which I'm going to talk about later and also they provide the counseling services from employee immediate uh, supervisor or from other sources. So in the uh, re human resource department, they are in charge of the and conduct the workshop counseling such as uh, the career awareness and also development processes. Everything about the career, okay, in the hospital and also they, they uh, conduct the vocational testing for the hospital employees as well. All the things that are happening in the career um, specific area and was, will be in charge by the a human resource department of the hospital. The aim of, of the human resource department is to give feedback concerning the employee's career interests and also the uh, for the educational opportunity for those employees who want to do more and who, who want to do the course that is a job related to what their specific area and um, so they can acquire through the courses and all that. And also, um, HR is in charge of the staff, uh, which can obtain the career development information through the career resource library, uh, example in the hospital. And uh, HR is also in charge of the individual counseling, uh, which is available for employees who need personal advices or career perspectives. And some following uh, activities, such as the participation in the resume or writing or uh, courses, or doing courses or participate in the career awareness workshop or on the educational opportunity opportunity etc and also hrd office in the hospital also um, uh, in charge of the employees who uh, take a tuition and could help them to have the tuition reimbursement etc and also other uh, they also in charge of other services for example women's career fair or uh, services in the local school system as a trial. Next I'm going to talk about is the diversity counseling. Briefly, diversity counseling um, here it was studied by Brenner in uh, uh, 1981. So Brenner uh, used concepts such as um, to provide opportunity for everyone with uh, commitment to the opportunity, for example, the diversity educational opportunity particular courses. For example, he also focused on the counseling and dealing with the diversity, for example, priority group or the associational 
group or institutional counseling. All individual counselors should have an advanced knowledge uh, to deal with the diversity counseling. For example, through the purpose of intervention and the method of intervention. So you can subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything when I uh, upload new ingredients, new topic and new insights anytime. Now number three, we're going to focus on the uh, career services in the uh, public school. The study was done by D. Silvestro and William in 1981 and they quote, In the face of diminishing financial resources and programs, Counseling services are still provided for adult learners in the public schools. So what are the types of counseling services in the classroom are uh, studied by D. Silvestro and William? So these are number one, the comprehensive counseling services. Number two is the interagency linkages and number three is the classroom counseling. First of all, let us focus on comprehensive counseling services. In the comprehensive counseling services in the public school, there is a full-time counsellor provide uh, directly one-on-one -on -one, uh, counselling on, for example, for example, the personal and family problems, for example, uh, academic and career-related concerns, etc. Now, number two, interagency uh, linkages, which means that the counselling services linked to the community agencies, servicing students in the conjunction with the personal educational plan, diagnose employment, training goals, uh, access entry skill levels, and work uh, directly with the teachers in the educational program to develop the educational program. Okay. Now we come to classroom counseling in the public school. So in the classroom counseling, the teacher could provide counseling competencies in the classroom, according to D. Sylvester and William. How? Also, only in the situation where the counsellor uh, serves as consultants to the teacher or to the faculty and help them to acquire the skills of counselling and the knowledge of counselling the uh, classroom students. Okay. Now, which come to number four, we focus on the computer-assisted career guidance. Computer-assisted career guidance, which is very common to today's society, in the services, the uh, customers or the uh, clients were leading to a special room, terminal room. The client is to press the on button and the machine will light up and offers a warm greeting. And then the client will lead through a series of um, questions and assessments. And that continuously narrows the option of career view, jobs and educational qualification required for these careers and employment. So finally, the, uh, the clients will place us on uh, the button on the terminal which consists of, for example, the instruction for additional reading or activity. For example, a list of careers that serve as a match to the aspirations, interests and abilities of the client. And then also, for example, terminal work consists of, for example, the recommendations to view a series of pre-packaged Video tabs or video links containing the job descriptions for the you know uh, after the assessment the computer will um, know which kind of jobs is suitable for the client and the client will have no no choice they have to take the uh, opportunity and will assist by the computer to work through the jobs and also to watch uh, particular videos about the jobs before they entering the workforce. So after that, the briefing by the counsellor and a dialogue that serves the process and outcome of the interaction with the computer and as the client has personally selected the options and the results do not become, uh, do not become a matter for debate or dis disillusionment. Counselling process can focus on the future activity and the career searches which eliminate the uh, time for the uh, interaction between the real human. So in this scenario, the counsellor only serves as a guide. Most of the activities is uh, going through with the interaction between the client and the computer. Because the computer will analyze and diagnose the client's needs and the connection to the career uh, information and particular jobs, which removes the burden of the human counsellor. So if you like the content, of course, uh, remember to uh, put a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Finally, we come to the final one, which is the non-traditional approach of career counseling. What are the features? 
The features include using, of course, using non-traditional approach and also helps adults who cannot attend universities or colleges regularly or maybe too far distance or have limited access far away from the uh, destination of the university or colleges and help them to access to counseling services via, for example, um, video and television, etc. And also include the media as regarding, for example, using the telephone, using the uh, written communication, uh, audio, uh, radio and television, computer assist counseling, and also programs, self instructional material, and non institutional settings, etc. That's all for my topic today. So remember for awesome suggestions and advices, you can book me through the links in the description section below and I will give you awesome insight into what you need to know for your profession and your organization. In conclusion today, we learned of course, first one we learned that there are three types of counseling services provided in the large hospital setting. And also today we learned that the types of counseling services in the classroom are the comprehensive counseling services, the interagency linkages, and the classroom counseling. And we also learned today the computer assisted guidance is through computer system, of course. So that's all for me today. And subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you don't miss anything when I upload the new videos, new insights at any time. And finally, thank you very much for tuning in today. Until next time, and goodbye.